new patron of James Summerton. Oh, honey bunny. Bear in mind, this is the video at the time of release and it has 70,000 views nearly at the point of filming this. 3,432 comments so far and he has six patrons. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, it's not funny. Except it absolutely is. Oh, hi, how are you doing? I bet you didn't think you'd be getting another one of these anytime soon. <laughs> this better be good. Like, he better not just be wasting all of our time by doing another video. Do you know what I mean? Like, there must be substance to this. Oh, I woke up this morning, loads to do, interviews, filming, scripting. And then I heard this dropped. So I had to just pause everything because I am my own boss and I can do that. We have been absolutely blessed over the past couple weeks with videos from Philosophy Tube, FD Signifier, Foreign Man and Foreign Land, New John the Duncan coming, Turb. Who else am I not forgetting? I think there's a ContraPoints in the works. Uh, there's just so many wonderful, scrumptious things to watch on YouTube. There's also another apology from James Summerton. I don't know if you know. I don't know if you, have you seen? Yeah, yeah, he's trying again. Bless him. So uh, in, in good old fashioned matriarch type style, I am back for the drama one more time. Okay, just one more, just, just give me, just give me, just give me one more time. Okay, it's just one more hit. It's, it's all I need, I swear. It's all I need, okay? Just one more. Uh, I am working on something that will, um, hopefully go towards humanity rather than just focusing on drama but again jokes aside this isn't just about the drama and nor do I think that I'm just covering drama here this is an important topic um, and as much as we like to have that internal joke I have had a few people really quite kindly reach out and say that they they prefer coverage of it from someone else rather than watching the video directly which I completely understand but also that it helps to validate their feelings by hearing someone else on the scene talk about what's happening so with that in mind without further ado i'm going to be reacting live i have only seen the first minute of this i thought i would save my honest reactions for this um coverage we're going to watch the whole thing in full as well so it will be quite long but that's also so that you know there's nothing missed unless i do some editing later but if so it will just be like small things um i was going to go live but because of the time at the moment i think most people are asleep so i thought it would just be best to release this tonight um i have saved the file just in case this one gets deleted as well james and i'm already noting from the title that at this current state of time of filming is a measured response which is very much like a, a the similar title that h1 mcguy always uses so it's already coming out there with a little bit more sass than i think maybe james summerton should be coming up with but that's just my opinion from the offset so one last thing one last caveat here i will be open to what James has to say. I think that's something important to say with this. I'm not gonna just come at this all guns blazing and be like, do your channel. Like we've had that discussion. This person is now creating something new. Some videos have come back on James Summerton's channel. I don't know if you saw, but um, I don't know whether that means like some of the plagiarism where that was like debunked or he got permission. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm about to find out. I can't deny got my juices going i'm not gonna lie it's a bit exciting okay it is a nice distraction from everything else going on in this world which i'm gonna indulge in for 43 minutes after that it's back to a very large uh, video i said that i'm already very proud of i have some amazing people working on it so if you watch this and you're enjoying my character my content please do subscribe because there's much more to come okay much bigger better things that I scripted and wrote myself. So, you know, already beating someone. What would we want to see? Okay, let's do some predictions. That could be fun. So what would I like to see? I would like to see some actual accountability this time because of the first um, apology. I don't think he mentioned the word plagiarism once. So I want to see him actually like own up and say, okay, I did a thing and I'm sorry. Uh, that would be a start. <laughs> ah! I'm actually nervous. I'm actually <laughs> I can't believe we're here again. Uh, just a disclosure, this video is monetized, but revenue from it will be sent along to H Bomber Guy's team to be dispersed to the people whose work I plagiarized. Uh, if his team won't accept it, 
I'll be making monthly donations to Wikipedia and Trans Lifeline going forward. Uh, you may have also noticed that a few of my past videos have gone up on the channel again, and revenue from those as well we will also be sent along with the revenue from this video. Oh my gosh, so much to unpack. I'll be quick. Um, okay, he said the word plagiarism, so that's better than the first apology uh, so far. <laughs> early days, yeah, early days. Um, I feel like he's already definitely saying more, so let's. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of oddly hopeful. I bet later me in. 43 minutes is like ha, ha, ha. you thought but i'm oddly okay this is different this is definitely a different tone i will say one thing about the monetization side it's like it could be monetized now and shared to the people great but it might not be in the future we don't have any any way of knowing that like so that's not to me like the biggest declaration of a new me i've been getting in touch with the people who i plagiarized to apologize one-on-one -on -one instead of a mass apology it's a bit difficult because many of them don't have public email addresses, so I'm still working on it, but it is a top priority of mine. I've heard back from a few of them, and they were actually incredibly nice, um, accepting my apology and just imploring me to do better in the future. So I want to thank them publicly for that. There's plenty that I haven't heard back from, and I completely understand that in many cases uh i wouldn't want to talk to me either okay i'm sorry already i'm feeling a bit gaslit i'm feeling a bit like hey some of the people said i'm okay now so you have to too and i think that's a bit dodgy give us names then i mean if you've spoken to people and you've apologized and they said it's okay just do better who said that are they happy for you to diagnose uh, to like digress that with us tell us who is on your side now the fact that we're not hearing any hardcore evidence and it's getting a sense of like, hey, some people forgave me. Okay, so can't be that bad. And that's not the vibe. Apologize to my audience, though. You trusted me to be a good representative of the queer community, and I was not that. I tried to be. I tried to be a voice for every member of the queer community, but that was a failed endeavor before it even started. I'm a cis, white, gay man. No matter how much I try to be a good spokesperson, I can never really truly understand the life experiences of other far more put upon members of the queer community. This is one of the reasons that I would use their own words, but I should have made it very clear that that's what I was doing. I never... I mean, he's, <laughs> he's admitting it. At least he's admitting it. At least he's admitting it. Thought that I was the only voice out there, as some have said, but being a cis white man, I thought I might be able to win over some people who wouldn't otherwise listen, unless it was someone who looks and sounds just like them. And so I tried speaking for everyone. I don't think anyone sounds like and you. This but was okay. a horrible mistake. What I thought was being inclusive ended up leading to a lot of people feeling left out and even offended. This fell upon Nick as well as a non-binary person on the ace spectrum. They wanted to include asexuality and non-binary representation in our videos, but because Nick's experience is not universal, there is no universal experience, People felt that we were delegitimizing their own experiences because we focused on Nick's, and I apologize for that. And I'm sure that Nick does as well. Um, I'd also like to extend a personal apology to Jesse Earl, better known as Jesse Gender. Out of everyone that I spoke to who was also a YouTuber, Jesse was by far the kindest person i think jesse might be one of the kindest people i've ever met or ever encountered we never actually met in person because of my hot-headedness i drew her into just this anger spiral of mine that was unwarranted and absolutely ruined a possible friendship jesse was actually doing her best to kind of mitigate my frustration and and everything and and uh at that moment and i just wasn't allowing her to do that 
and I really truly so we're knee deep in the apologies he did call out the kind of ace couple situation not so much by name didn't talk about the numbers didn't talk about the the like investment they made to the uh video like the film creation company but it did talk about nick fine i need a t i mean and I, I did say before let's hear some actual names of who you've spoken to and he has called through talked to jesse gender that's interesting i wonder though if this is talking about the conversation that he had with jesse before all of this when they talked about nebula and jesse gender was like there are queer people in nebula thank you you're not the only one that needs to represent the queer community or whether this is a timestamp of after this whole mess. And I, I don't know. So I actually hope he explains that. I get the chance to speak with Jessie one-on-one. -on -one, or if you have gotten the chance, you'll know just how nice she is and how kind. And I was a, a real asshole for uh, dragging her into my reactionary unwarranted frustration we obviously we haven't spoke since all of that happened um but okay. Jesse, if you are watching this video um i do want you to know that i am honestly sorry for that i hope truly honestly i hope everything goes as well as possible for you because you deserve all of it there was a misunderstanding is... between Jesse and I um, after that happened that I do want to clear up where someone who at least claimed to be a fan of Jesse's, you know, did an internet and threatened to kill me, which is, you know, being a person on the internet, death threats are unfortunately not uncommon. At the time, though, uh, I was in a very panicked state, and so I did report it to the police. I did not report Jesse to the police, which is the misunderstanding that people um came away with so this is talking about something Jesse before the h bomber guy video this is talking about something ages no ago if i'm not mistaken to do that. and it did end up that this person had a prior record with the police um of violent acts and they actually lived quite near me um so the police took it very seriously they took it so seriously that they implored me not to speak to jesse which i took their advice on which i shouldn't have honestly i should have at least clarified to jesse what was going on and not just left her hanging and so i want to again apologize to jesse for that but in that state i listened to the police which is you know maybe not the best decision all the time because the cops don't usually have the best interests of people at heart so just i'm gonna like just tone police just a small little bit sorry this is an apology for something that happened ages ago. So like, uh, yeah, fine, it's 43 minutes long, but we're six minutes in, come on. Anyway, the kind of sprinkling in of the like, a cab vibe, but not going wholeheartedly in. I don't know if that, if that, that was a choice. I don't know, I don't know. Where's this going, James, come on. That and everything else that happened. Completely understand why you would not want to speak to me ever again, but I just want you to know that I am sorry. But now back on the original topic, the work Nick and I were doing. Just have to say, so far, that could have been an email. I really, <laughs> that when you're in a meeting at work and you're like, okay, we get it. This could have, this could have ended six minutes ago. We could have cut that whole six minutes. That could have been an email to Jess. No, no doubt in my mind is that that, that has been an email to Jesse. I think he's just doing that public, uh, the apology of that public. I wanted it to be you know, for everyone. We wanted it to be a channel where every queer person could feel welcomed, and we failed at that. That is something that, in hindsight, I think is impossible to create, and that's why it's important for there to be many different queer voices in spaces like YouTube, and there are. What's more important is that those voices are discoverable, which is something that I should have been helping with. I often shared other queer creators on Twitter, but this was when I only had, you know, 800, 1,000 Twitter followers, and these creators usually had a whole lot more than that. It was a weird thing, because usually they would have infinitely more Twitter followers, but a whole lot less YouTube subscribers. I'm not sure what created that 
dichotomy, but something was definitely off with the algorithm there. There is a part of my brain that says YouTube kind of went, oh, you know, white male queer, let's push him and, you know, ignore everyone else in the community, whereas people were able to actually discover uh, other queer creators on Twitter and then make their way to YouTube, but the YouTube algorithm kind of that's the most negative interpretation I have of it, which maybe. unfortunately may be true uh, in any case. I should have done more to share the voices of other queer people. Certainly the people yeah, that's the whose end, works I that's used, the main point. both credited and plagiarized in my videos, but also just other creators on YouTube. It's important for us as a community, as vaguely defined as we are, to support each other and... I didn't do that nearly enough. From day one, I was very taken in by the idea of being a YouTuber. As soon as my videos started to get recommended by the algorithm after not releasing a new video for like two years, I felt like I had a short period of time to get the next videos out as soon as possible, which is why so little work was put into the writing of them and so much was taken from other places. Oh my god, here we go. Early on, I thought Buckle crediting up. authors in the opening credits alone was enough, especially since the videos weren't monetized early on. But I understand now. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I was just about to fall for this. And then, oh, that's, do, 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 do. Let's, let's wind that back. Hold on a second. Earlier on, when they weren't monetized, I thought that just putting the names of creators that I was stealing their work from, word for word, was enough for me to get away with adding them into the video essay that I was creating without crediting them fully, giving them any actual like recognition for their work and still gaining the benefit of the algorithm and fast production of my videos. That's what he's just said and admitted. He left out obviously some of the main uh, meat to that sandwich and we just got an air sandwich. But that's what he's just said. And he's pleading ignorance that I didn't know I was meant to like cite properly. Like, I just thought like I could just like put their names in, right? Like, oh my God, I like, oh, like, I, no, sorry. That's, I'm calling BS on that one. Doesn't he have a degree? Let me double check that. Doesn't he, ha yeah, he has a marketing degree. So there's no physical way he would have passed that marketing degree without learning about citation. Right? Am I am I good so far? So how he just jumped on YouTube and was like, yeah, I don't need to put the link to the video or like any form of a bi bibliography in this video. Because everyone else is doing it currently on YouTube, big or small. Um, but I'm different for some reason. Like, I don't need to do that. No, sorry. Well, you were really close, James. I was really literally about to be like, okay, maybe we can talk. <laughs> but no. Unless I miss something, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. some of the people who were who I did plagiarize that that was just I was wrong. That was not the way to go about it. They should have been cited properly within the text of the video. They should have been called out in the video at least once verbally, as well as you know having citations on screen. If there were a whole lot of them, like with. You know, one of the examples that H Bomber guy used in his video was the Deep Cuts video. There were a whole lot of people who I, you know, credited in the opening credits, but really it's plagiarism. They should have been cited on screen with actual citations. Other people that of, you just didn't you know, put in at all you can find as well. Stuff. Maybe Self there should have even been a bibliography that you could have Maybe. gone to like on a Google Drive or something like that. Because or in the description of you your know, YouTube Although video. I might have stated that the scripts were based upon the work of these authors, it in many cases wasn't just based on their work. It was their work, word for word. In oh, I'm sorry. I don't like how he's sprinkling in these little crumbs of justification. Like as much as I said they were based on the work of these authors i understand now that like i didn't cite 100 percent correctly and for that i'm wrong like no no you know what you were doing you're not stupid like with the evil queens disney video i'll put the email up on the screen that i got from girl you best believe we're reading this okay sean griffin i can't read i'm blind tinker bells and evil queens video essay so this is the original one that he basically took a book word for word plagiarized the whole thing and then after being called out of it at the time, I do believe 
had the or audacity to go back audacity to go back to the author of the book ask if it was okay get later permission then go in and add that permission to an updated version of the video essay and then claim that he had permission when he did it which i think h11 guy like clearly like stated but the email reads hi james i did get a chance to watch your video while i am perhaps not as pessimistic about the relationship between disney and lgbtqi plus uh, uh, culture as your piece is i recognize parenthesis and largely agree with close bracket the issues you are raising about where things are have gone since i wrote my book and i'm grateful for the shout out in the title card it was the one thing that i was going to request that you give me at least a bit of citation it's a thoughtful video and i hope your audience gets a lot, a lot out of it all the best sean oh this is not the thing you think it is i don't know why i'm singing but it's passion september the 10th i believe that says 2020 so okay this is then just clearly an email from way after when he already has permission released a new version and then is maybe then showing the email after i don't know that's alleged in my opinion alleged in my opinion alleged i am m m o i m o i m o but this isn't the play you think it is what is this what is this about i'm just oh this is tea um where he did give me permission to publish the video i sent the finished video to him and he watched it and he gave me permission but in most cases what i didn't get permission and thought that just putting the author's name in the opening credits was enough i was much more interested in the production of the videos than the writing of them at this point so after three or four videos i brought nick on as a main writer for the channel the idea is that they would write the vast majority of the scripts i would film voice and edit the videos and we'd split the money that came in we were roommates at the time bus driver and bus nick driver didn't have a job so i figured it would help under the bus. this is actually when we had some of our biggest videos uh like the ones talking about wiccan and hulkling where we lucked out because it came out right in time for WandaVision to hit. And then the Killing Stalking video, which became our biggest video by far. Uh, the Sadism of Class was another one. These videos weren't plagiarized and we loved making them. Uh, it didn't take long for the channel income to start growing. Lucky timing, really, because this was around the same time that I was laid off since the company that I was working for downsized once COVID hit its second year. Nick and I had both grown up poor, so we started doing what we could to try and stabilize our income as much as possible. This meant putting out more videos, which meant I had to take over more of the writing duties. But since filming, editing, usually doing multiple edits because of YouTube copyright issues, as well as managing the channel and dealing with my mom's recent cancer diagnosis, all of that was already taking up so much of my time and attention. Okay, anti-gaslight work here. What he's also failing to admit here is that the scale of production very much correlates to how many videos uh, the channel puts out so yes i'm sure it was a very busy time for you and a difficult time for you and i'm sorry to hear what happened in the background but that doesn't mean you couldn't scale back the level of production um still try and optimize on the monetization elements um but also not put out too much to the extent that you have to steal people's work in order to do so i'm not saying like don't make videos i'm saying if you find yourself having to steal work plagiarize work in order to put out a certain amount of videos you don't deserve to be putting out that many videos it's like the recent thing we see in late stage capitalism now of companies not paying their staff a living wage you don't deserve to have a business then you're not taking the risk you're not like innovating new things you're just not paying people properly you're not doing the basic moral thing you need to do in this capitalist hell we live in i have no sympathy as as difficult it was that you may, got made redundant and you and potentially both Nick, you both were not making enough, then there are other avenues than stealing and plagiarizing people's hard earned work. What about the work that they made that they didn't get that recognition for, that they didn't get any of that money? And yes, you can monetize this and say you're going to give H Bomber guy $20 to say sorry or whatever, however much you make, but that's nowhere in comparison to stealing someone's hard earned work. You don't deserve to grow if you're not good enough to grow. The, cut, the algorithm is cutthroat, for sure. I'm not an advocate for this. I wish, as a leftist socialist, I wasn't on YouTube, contracted to them to make content for this massive corporate machine in order to get some form of money to pay my bills. But it's a choice I made. It is a choice I made. And it's a choice you made to steal to get where you are as well. Copy and pasting blocks of text into scripts. My intention at the time 
was to use these as a jumping off point once Nick and I sat down to edit the script, because that's what we would do. I would sort of put in my parts, Nick would put in his parts, and then we would sit down at a table, read through the whole script, and kind of try and make it seem cohesive. But, and here's something I'm sure a lot of people will call a bullshit excuse, I have memory issues because of a head injury from when I was a child. Uh, they're actually getting worse. I've talked about it on streams and in videos, so yes, it is real, but some people will call it a bullshit excuse anyway. The head injury is actually what led to me having epilepsy, which is why I can't work in any job that involves physical labor. Employers can't get insurance for me to like lift things or operate vehicles and stuff like that. I actually did marketing for a restaurant group for a little while, but got let go when they found out that I was epileptic because, at least according to them, I couldn't be insured to be in the kitchens where I needed to be to film videos and take photos and stuff like that. But anyway, when it came to editing the scripts, I couldn't remember what I'd written and what had been copy-pasted. We should have just chucked out everything that I had put into the script and filled them in with wholly original thoughts. Or I should have been taking notes on where things came from so that we could at least cite them in the videos, if nothing else. But I never did that. According to my... Okay, I have a few things to say. I really wanted to believe you. I didn't think you would have the audacity to come back twice and talk out your ass. But um, you yet again, sprinkling... It's like a you're like baking a, a a cake. You're like one part saying, "Hey, I have no other option here. I have to do YouTube, so you have to forgive me." I'll come back to that. I will come back to that. Another part saying that like, "Oh my god, I just have this like I just I couldn't help but plagiarize. I'm so forgetful." We'll come back to that. Trust me. Um, but the fundamental fact that you put someone's entire script in your script not even considering it as a reference or as uh, a point of like, okay, let's read this and make some notes and see what we can talk. No, you just put it as part of the script. The, the fact that that is that single action that you can come up with some kind of excuse now in hindsight, months later, to explain why you had to and you forgot and you didn't make notes and oh my gosh, you're just terrible at referencing and citation. The action itself that you saw, you had a file open that said your script, probably my script, English and you said okay my script what should I put in uh should I write my own script or should I put in someone else's essay um what we'll do is we'll just put in this essay for now and then we'll come back to it and make notes oh no I can't remember where my notes are oh well we'll just make that into a video and release it and not credit them properly it'll be fine are we are we meant to take that are we meant to just be like yeah sure that makes total sense oh and you can't do any other jobs so you have to do this YouTube plagiarism stuff fair enough mate let me get my patron back right on are you serious? Do you think we are unintelligent, my guy? And also, let's come back to this. Let's come back to this. Let's come back to this. So I, then if you know at home, if you watch my channel for a while, I've mentioned it before. I had feminization surgery on my forehead. Yes, I'm transgender, then if you know. And I had a doctor that um, ruined my forehead. He put too much bone cement on my forehead and it dripped down into my eye, left my eye half shut, uh, my forehead is like squidgy. It's a whole thing. Uh, I had to get reconstructive surgery. I nearly took him to medical court, but because I signed a waiver that covered him crazily much more than any waiver should do, I couldn't sue him for what would have been hundreds of thousands. Um, well, thousands into the hundred thousand realm. Uh, I had no leg to stand on. I was left incapacitated, legally classed as disabled in the UK, unable to continue my career, which was at that time working with computers, interpreting, stuff like that. So for a long time, I was unable to work. I was lucky enough to be supported by my husband. So I tried some physical labor work and I had to come home, go to A&E because my head, headache, swelling, everything. I tried interpreting freelance, translation freelance, but I couldn't look at screens for more than a few hours. After the reconstructive surgery, I was very lucky enough to get some form of quality of life back and to the point that I can now make YouTube videos. And I choose to do that apart from other jobs because I enjoy it and I'm lucky enough to be able to do so. I'm in no way in the situation that I'm going to say that I have to only do this because it's all I can manage, but it's a perfect, it's a choice I make to do this. So as someone that has gone through a smidgen of what even he is 
um, pushing towards. I, I, I'm not going to speak on behalf of any whole community. I'm just going to say how it makes me feel. But like, there is no logical connection that that would allow anyone to talk about why it's okay to plagiarize or why it's okay that they plagiarize. That there is no, I, like that doesn't come into this discussion at all. I went through that. Didn't mean I just started stealing people's work. That, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You cannot use that as an excuse. You can you can bring it up as a valid excuse for, for like explaining why you are epileptic. For sure. Tell us that story. That's interesting. Thanks. Thanks for like that might be relevant. That has no relevance as to why it is acceptable for you to just steal people's work. Are, are you are you serious? Like and to sprinkle that in amidst this kind of gaslighting conversation of like and that's why like I'm just really forgetful. I didn't like make it clear where I was stealing and where I wasn't. Like we've all seen the H Bomber guy clip of like colour after colour, script after script someone else's essay after someone else's essay you probably forgot which one was the actual thing that you wrote because it was hardly any in there do that probably stems from my recently diagnosed adhd but i don't know if i'm willing to say that really maybe it was or maybe it was just plain laziness maybe i thought that this was somewhere that i could cut a corner because i was torn in so many other directions honestly i can't remember like i said memory issues but yes we should have just thrown out my contributions to the scripts and filled them in with original writing but we felt like we had too much of a time crunch we felt like we had to get videos out more often to feed the algorithm and then my mom died and i became completely useless i couldn't think straight at all so nick had to complete uh, the only thing i will say is that like, that must be terrible and i don't wish that on anyone something we will have to at one point go through usually and it's horrible that's all I'm gonna say on that. I agree. That's, that must be hard. I would step away. I would step down. I would take a break. Yeah. Again, that doesn't make it acceptable to steal other people's work. While I dealt with things you deal with after a person dies, my dad, you see, he can't read or write. Uh, he was very poor when he was a kid. So he had to leave school really young to work in order to feed his many brothers and sisters. So I had to deal with all the legal stuff after my mom died, as well as making sure that all my dad's bills were paid and whatnot, especially after his income was basically cut in half. There was supposed to be a buffer here, money-wise, as my mom had a life insurance policy that was going to be split between my dad and myself. But the insurance company, RBC Insurance... Why on earth are we hearing about how difficult it was for you financially when... I'm sorry. There are there are there are empirical things we know about your life that tell us that to some extent you had a privilege against the majority of the global like population. You went to why we're talking about how post YouTube production time he was really poor, at least growing up, or his relatives are. I don't really know why that comes into it. If he's about to use that as an as a justification for plagiarism, I'm a Probably going to throw my laptop into the next room. Insurance with them, maybe rethink that. Uh, refused to pay out the policy because my mother never mentioned that she had family with diabetes. She didn't have diabetes, but because she didn't think to mention that she had family with diabetes, it apparently voided the policy. All they did was refund a year's worth of premiums that she'd paid even though she'd been paying them for about 15 years. One of the things, the main thing, really, that I was supposed to do with my portion of the insurance money was I was supposed to make a movie. These were direct instructions from my mom herself. She'd been very much behind me when I decided, when I was about 10, <laughs> that I wanted to be a filmmaker. And she wanted me to finally have the opportunity to do that, even if she never got to see it. Did she want so you to steal though, James? Went bust. I decided to try and crowdfund it, at least enough to make a short film or two. This is what... Is he really about to hit us with it was my mum's dying wish? So, what happened with Telos? Let me break down the timeline. 
When we launched the campaign in February of 2022, we hoped to raise $3,000 to produce a short film that we hoped that we would then use as a sort of proof of concept to attract investors, either private, public, or through Canada's telefilm program to produce a feature. Some people online have stated that $3,000 never would have covered the cost of a short film, but these were not going to be unionized movies, and we were very clear about that upfront. We wanted to be able to pay actors as best that we could, but we never expected to be able to reach typical union wages. The crew was going to be made up of people that I had gone to film school with. Everyone, including Nick and myself, we were roommates at the time living on the East Coast, were more than happy to work behind the scenes for free. We planned on writing a movie with a small cast and only one or two locations, ideally ones that we could get access to for free. Again, we assumed all of the money would go to the actors. Uh, we kind of looked at this as a sort of community theater troupe, but for filmmaking. After the campaign launched, it did infinitely better than we could have expected, and our ambitions grew. We started planning to make a feature instead of a short film, and the plan was to take this around to uh, film festivals. The feature we settled on, entitled Final Girl, was about the lone survivor of a slasher movie type massacre 10 years after the fact, as she was publishing a book about her ordeal. Drawing attention from people online convinced that she had actually been the killer all along. In the end, we would find out that the killer was the boyfriend of the girl who the main character had secretly been dating at the time of the killings. And most of the people he killed were, in his eyes, collateral damage as he made his way to our main character, because he was not happy that his girlfriend was cheating on him with a girl. And to those who say that I plagiarized the plot from the novel Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, read the book. It's nothing like the plot of the movie. And the final girl is a trope in horror movies. So if using the final girl trope is plagiarism, then basically everyone who's made a slasher movie since Texas Chainsaw Massacre owes the Toby Hooper estate some money. But anyway, Nick and I planned out the movie, but I didn't want to start writing it until the campaign ended and the money was actually deposited. Uh, after the insurance debacle, I didn't want to count our chickens before they hatched. When the money was officially deposited, I immediately began work on the screenplay. I finished it that summer, soon after Nick had left to spend two months at home in Ottawa, Ontario with family. I sent the script to him to read right away because I was prou very proud of it, but Nick didn't want to share his opinion on it until he got back to the East Coast. So in the meantime, I put out a preliminary casting call on local job boards. When Nick got back, uh, he believed that the script needed a page one rework. This is also when he told me that he'd be moving back to Ontario permanently soon as he wanted to live closer to family and live in a bigger city with more opportunities. This was a punch to the gut for me. We'd been living together since 2015 and had become quite dependent on each other. I felt like there was no way that I could make this movie without him. And since I had received not that many replies to the initial casting call, I took this as a sign that Ontario would be a better place to launch Telos, even though all my professional, professional film connections were on the East Coast. That was a mistake. There, I... I can't remember exactly what Nick's pronouns are. I believe they are non-binary. There's a lot of he's going on. But it could, it could be could be that it's he, they, don't know, and that, that, that they go by, I don't know. Access to the campground that would serve as the setting for a good portion of the movie, as well as easy access to any number of houses, apartments, and even offices that friends of friends would let me use to shoot. In Ontario, I had none of that which immediately put the brakes on Final Girl since there was no conceivable way of filming it, at least not within the budget that we had. After Nick and I moved to the Toronto area, he decided that he actually wanted to move home to Ottawa, uh, to the Ottawa area, about five hours away, at least for a little while. In the meantime, he would take a train to the GTA, the greater Toronto area, once a month uh, to work on YouTube videos for a few days and then head back. This went on for a little less than a year. So I began brainstorming new movies that we could film in Ontario. This is where the multiple posters and teaser trailers came from. I was trying to create something tangible to show that work was still being done with Telos. I wrote multiple treatments for movies over the next few months, and Nick and I eventually landed on one called Antisocial, a murder mystery about a former social media clique who had gone their separate ways on very bad terms, and they were coming together for a reunion at a sort of VidCon event um, they were all sharing a house, and then some of them were going to start showing up dead. Around this same time, summer of 2023, uh, Nick had moved to the GTA full-time. Uh, he and I spent weeks working out exactly how the murder mystery would parse out in the movie. We had a bunch of whiteboards up on my wall, and we were just breaking it down piece by piece. Uh, I put out a new casting call in the GTA and received hundreds of responses, so I was planning on casting as soon as the script was finished. but. After trying to work out the numbers as far as paying actors went, plus locations, food, costumes, as well as the equipment that we'd already purchased and the legal costs of setting up Telos as a business, we realized that we'd gone way too big with this movie. 
Uh, the movie had too many characters, too many locations, and it was just way too complex to be able to pull off with the budget. So I Again, I don't understand why in the production or pre-production time period that you're working that out, that you wouldn't be aware of that. I don't understand why we're getting this explanation now retrospectively as to what happened, which isn't quite really what we uh, need right now. I don't need the full background as to why. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess we kind of do for Telos specifically, but like a retrospective excuse doesn't make sense because in the moment you would have known that you were going well out of budget. You would have known when you were looking at that whiteboard and planning a, a, a film that like, yeah, this sounds, sounds great, but there's no way we have that much money left. Like, I don't understand how, like, does he think that we're stupid enough to think that he thought this back then? Or are we meant to take this now as, as just face at face value when the trust has not been built there? I'm also just feeling like this is just a lot of excuses. This isn't like an, a, an, a, a moving forward. I mean, we're over halfway now. ...for a movie called The Listener, about a true crime podcaster focused on the mysterious deaths of homeless gay men in his city. I was a fair way into the script when we realized it'd be about a year before we could even film anything since winter was on its way and the story relied heavily on a summer setting. So make so another film that isn't set in summer. Like, uh, like why are we getting this, this retrospective thing? Like, oh, my hands were tired. I, you know, we were just facing winter and I decided to write an entire script. It was really good and I wrote myself. And no one can see that script now, but like, it was really good, I'm sure. But. day adaptation of The Vampire, based on the book by John Polidori. Uh, it's one of the original works of published vampire fiction. It's never received a proper film adaptation and was in public domain, so we thought it would be a great choice. And the cast could be kept down to basically five characters, with only two of them being on screen most of the time. Nick and I both wrote treatments for it, which we planned on, planned on melding together into a final treatment that we would write the script based off of. Oh my god, no way! I am trying to believe you! Are you absolutely serious to me? <sighs> we were gonna do- <laughs> oh, I'm just- I can't- Are we- Oh my god, I'm try- I'm really trying. I really am trying. I really am. I'm really trying to do this and give you the benefit of the doubt. But he really did just sit here at the 24th minute and say, we were about to come out with like a video, a film for like Telos where we had all this crowdfunded money funded. We were about to like come out with it, like on the day. But then Hates Bomber Guy released that video. Wah, wah. Like, oh, oh we, really? That happened to be the day. I mean, maybe that's true. It doesn't really matter, even if it is. That doesn't, like, help his case or Nick's case. But, like, that's so... A coincidence among coincidences that it happened to be that day. And the drama of this narrative that we're being fed here. Like, there, there didn't need to be that massive long conversation and that build-up to be told... The, at the point that H. Bomber Guy released that video, this is where we were in the production of the, the, the next instalment of what was going to happen with Telos. You could have so opened with that explanation, but instead we got the drama, we got the backstories, we got the family situations, we got Nick's involvement and how they were affected. And then we ended with the crescendo and climax of, and it all happened on the day H. Bomber Guy released his video. And it's like, this isn't the time for <laughs> you to try and flare your literary technique you to try and flare your literary technique um yeah i think that's that's a stretch to get us to just swallow that hole and be like yeah oh 
for you. I can't believe that H Bomber Guy made it light to how much you were plagiarizing all these people on the day you were at dinner. Ah, oh, oof. You were at dinner and everything. Uh, you know, like, what are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Since we left the East Coast. But the intention was never, ever, to take the money and run. I was so insanely excited about getting to make Telos a reality. I was excited about getting to make a short film, let alone a feature. It's always been my dream to make movies. So Telos meant and means the world to me. For Nick, it was... Oh, I wonder if that was a little bit of a slip up. A little bit of a slip up. Telos meant as if like, it's never going to happen. Oh, means, means it still might happen. I wonder. In my opinion, I am allegedly. Project, but not his passion. Nick wanted to write novels. He still does. Nick looked at this as a good creative outlet that was way more fulfilling than writing video essays. I should have stayed where I was and not gone to Ontario. The move uprooted everything that was solid about Telos and it took a whole year to get it back onto even anything close to stable footing. But I am working with a producer now, so you can expect an actual product from Telos this year. It will likely be a short film to start off, but there is going to be something coming out of Telos this year. I know I've lost your trust, but I yes, will make nothing financially from this project. The money no one that cares. is there will go wholly to paying queer artists to work on a queer film. I am not, nor have I ever intended to be, one of the people paid by Telos. N neither was Nick. We made this very clear to everyone who asked. During our work on Telos is also when the YouTube channel started getting sponsors, which, as I said, as someone who grew up poor, I basically accepted all of them, except for a few that I didn't think lined up with the message of the channel or had some bad news surrounding them. But there were a couple that had some anti-trans stuff going on in the news and I just didn't want to associate with that. But by accepting as many sponsors as we did, which became very important when Nick and I started living apart and suddenly had two rents to pay, we ended up needing to produce even more videos, which along with the work on Telos and making sure everything was okay with my dad while living thousands of kilometers away, meant I had even less time for writing, putting more stress on Nick and leading to even more copy pasting from me. That's what led to us putting out, I think six videos in one month at one point. It might've been five. But in any case, it was way too damn many videos to go out in one month. We tried to take the summer off from YouTube and... Okay, I'm sorry, again. We just about nearly got to the main crux of why the copy... The, the, it's the action of the copy and pasting. This is what we need to be talking about. And we have just danced around it with a, with a massive shroud of like... Backstory, guilt trips, gaslighting, and we just about nearly hit it and then it's next topic. That we are not looking for you to justify your actions. We're looking for you to apologize for them and take accountability. They are very different things, very different things. But to a narcissist, they're the same. Or at very least, one is much harder. I don't use that word lightly because I know that being there are narcissistic traits and there's a whole thing. But so far, in definitely the latter half, I just get the opinion that James Summerton is trying to convince us all that like we should support him again, go back to how it was, when that irrevocably, just, that is just not possible. And I personally, if I were him, I would delete my channel and move on and do something else. But I'm not saying that's what I think he should do. I don't think he could personally recover from this, but that's what I would do from sheer shame alone and just giving up on a on telos exclusively but even that went up in smoke because my housing situation just i won't go into it here i've talked about it ad nauseum on streams and stuff if you followed me on social media you know the clusterfuck i ended up in that led to me moving twice in two months in the last couple of months 
I've received a lot of emails, as you can imagine. Uh, many from people who were rightfully let down. Some from people threatening everything from doxing to violence because of the internet. Some with the kindest words of support I've ever heard, and others simply asking why I made it so difficult to contact me and if I was okay. They wanted to know why, as they put it, I nuked my social media presence. To be frank, it's because I didn't want to exist anymore. If you watched my honestly horrendous apology video back in December, you know I tried to make that happen. The not existing thing. But it was more intense than taking too many pills. It's not that I didn't want to be alive anymore. It's that I wished I'd never existed at all. That everyone I'd ever known would be better off had I just never been there. Very George Bailey, which is fitting given that it was Christmas time. It's only thanks to some very, very dedicated doctors and nurses and one very good friend that I'm even here able to film this right now. I'm not going to name her because I don't want to expose anyone else to the small, but seriously unstable group of people who watched the plagiarism in YouTube video and thought, well, he should be dead. Like I said, it's a, it was a very small group, but when they find out your address, and some of them are actually in your city, they can be terrifying. And they did find my address. And at least a couple of them showed up while I was at the hospital. Um, my neighbors did report them to the police. Uh, and I, I won't go into any more details than that. I'm not sure if I legally even can. But there's a reason I left Ontario within a week of getting the okay to do so from the doctors. So what's next then? Like I said... You'll notice that a few of my videos are live again on the channel. These ones don't come from plagiarized content and for the most part are written entirely by Nick. Nick lost three years worth of work when everything on the channel was taken down. And that's simply not fair to Nick. He worked hard writing those videos and deserves to have something to point to when he's looking for new writing work. I've also done some heavy then change the name of your channel. Change the name of your channel to Nick Hergot. Leave Nick's videos up. Give everyone the opportunity to continue to support Nick if you want to. And be done with it. Wash your hands of it. The, the fact that we are now just being admitted to by James Summerton. That one of the first actions he's taking in trying to rebuild his his character and brand is keep the videos up that Nick made on James Summerton's channel. That irony is not lost on me. Yes, you can credit him now. He can have worked for you at that time. But morally, it just doesn't really seem to stick right with me in that everyone knows what you are, have done in the past. Nothing is in a vacuum. Everything must be taken into context. And for someone that has been found out for plagiarizing, keeping up the monetization of videos, even if that's being donated to someone else, for someone that worked for you at the time that you didn't really create yourself under your name, doesn't sit that right. There are other ways you can do that. Other videos that did contain other people's writing, um, breaking it down to only original content again so that Nick has an actual portfolio of work. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, revenue from these will be going to the H Bomber Guy team to be sent out to the writers I plagiarized from or donated to charity. However, it works out in the end. These edited videos will be going back up on the channel in the next few days, I think, um, along with two completed video essays that we didn't actually get to release before everything happened. There's also some recent videos 
that didn't have any plagiarism that the sponsor asked to be taken down and their ads removed. Um, so they'll also be going back up without the sponsors, obviously. And soon I will be releasing a new video written entirely by me, properly cited, with all sources credited. Maybe no one will watch it, but I hope you do. I want to prove that I have the ability to do this without abusing other people's work. It's a very different kind of video than... Why do you want to prove that? Why do you want to prove that you have the ability to in fact make a masterpiece? Is it to show that the plagiarism was a waste of actually everyone else's time and that you could have been making your own content but you choose the lazy route to make more money? Is it for your own pride as a narcissist to show that actually I can do it and I was just copying everyone because I chose to? I'm just as talented as everyone else here, look at my next video essay. Is it to start making money again because you haven't had any money and when you're going to do this content creation you're going to carry on with the channel? I'm trying in my head to think of a valid reason why. Is it just because you love the love the job? Great, good faith, mega good faith. In fact, I just sprouted angel wings. Why, why, why continue? Why continue on this channel? Making a new channel, starting a new thing, starting a, a brand, working for someone else. Do like there are so many other things. If you are here for the passion of the job, and you want enough money to sustain yourself, and if money comes into it, but like continuing this name and brand is like. I just don't see how he will recover. I don't see why he would want to. I'd say it's more of a documentary than a video essay. You won't find my opinions anywhere in there, just cited facts. I'd like to keep making videos like these new ones about people and events in gay history and definitive gay movies that you maybe never heard of, stuff like that. It's actually something that I planned on doing this year anyway. There would be two videos a month. Nick would write a video essay and I would write one of these documentary style videos that would fulfill the two videos per month sponsorship deal that we had at the time. I have no sponsors now, so probably not gonna be two videos a month. It'll probably just be the one, which will give more time for research and citation and crediting and making sure that there is no misinformation in the videos, uh, which I know, I know that misinformation made its way into uh, our past videos. That was not something that we intended. In some cases, it was information that I was told by people that I considered experts. Um, in other cases, it was information that we had researched. Uh, in other cases, it was things that Nick had learned in university. The point being, it was never malicious. We didn't, we weren't trying to lie about things. I have a little bit more sympathy for misinformation because, bear with me, I know that at, at James Summerton's scale, that is less forgivable, but we all have to get to that scale from somewhere. And I think accidentally, if it really was accidental, misinforming when you think you're basing something on fact is to me a little bit more forgivable than just outright copying and stealing. But you know, once you get to that point that you can afford to have fact checking done, then you should be, I think. We were not trying to spread misinformation. That was not ever our intention. And that's something else that I want to apologize for. As for my Patreon, everyone can stop worrying about me relaunching it right in time for a billing cycle that will not be happening. I don't want anyone who either doesn't know about the plagiarism or simply forgot to unsubscribe to get billed. So I'm going to start from zero. I have put together a new Patreon account. So if you want to support my documentaries about gay history, Fantastic. Honestly, your faith in me after everything means the world to me. Uh, I'm definitely Googling that right now. Uh, his immediate attempts to make the patron work and continue have obviously been unrealized, let's say. 
And so I think that now he's understood that as that's not possible, he's starting from fresh. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh. Oh, I shouldn't laugh. I just can't with you, James. I just can't, my guy. Okay. So this is the new patron of James Summerton. My goodness me. Three posts. I might become a member just to <laughs> read the posts. We've got silver tier, gold tier, platinum. Oh, honey bunny. So we've got this like documentary looking thing. Queen of Bob's Burgers. So they look like documentary style, like retrospectives. So we do have 24, no, 24. That's really Louise. 14 members, six paid members, and three posts. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny. Because <laughs> it absolutely is. Bear in mind, this is the video at the time of release. Um, it's out like it's been out for like a few hours and it has 70,000 views nearly at the point of filming this 3,432 comments so far and he has six patrons okay let's carry on <laughs> I've lost your trust I'm gonna work my ass off to earn it back though and I know for some of you, I'll never be able to do that, but I'm going to try anyway. You know, there's a link in the description to the Patreon if you want to join it, where you'll be able to see the two yet to be released videos right now, as well as, you know, take part in other stuff that will be on there, like a book club, podcasts, uh, voting on upcoming videos, all the usual Patreon stuff. But this video is not about promoting myself. This video is about really? me apologizing. And I am incredibly sorry. It was never my intention for anyone to feel hurt or left out or excluded. It was never my intention to spread misinformation. And I'm really, really sorry that that happened. Notice that he hasn't said it was never my intention to steal and plagiarize other people's work because he knew that's what he was doing. Whether he had a valid reason to or not, he knew exactly what he was doing. Much as I've tried to explain myself in this video, you know, the memory issues, the ADHD, um, the personal things that were going on in my life with my mom getting sick and then dying and trying to make sure that my dad was okay following that and everything. Those aren't excuses. There is no excuse for what I did. There are lots of people who make videos on YouTube. There are lots of people who make podcasts, TV shows, movies, documentaries, who have shit going on in their lives that's very stressful. And they don't plagiarize people's work there is no excuse for what i did finally for everything that happened whether it be with my mom or the memory issues there was something i could have done to mitigate that there's nothing i could have done about my mom getting cancer but knowing my patrons as i did in hindsight i'm pretty damn sure that if i had said guys I need to step away for a couple of months to deal with this. I don't think a whole lot of people would have fled the Patreon. A part of me thought they would at the time because I catastrophized, but I really don't think that would have happened. Even in the very beginning when... Re mm, again, just about getting to a decent apology, but then again, you just lost me there. If you catastrophize, did you not at any point assume that of all of the various video essays that were put together after you plagiarized them, that that would one day come out in some massive scoop and you would be left with nothing? If you really do catastrophize, did that not cross your mind faster than the idea of you saying about your personal experience and that you need a break? You don't think that... So this is this is what is 
becoming apparent his understanding of humanity from the perspective of someone that is lacking in some fundamental parts of humanity like a sociopath like a narcissist he doesn't imagine that people would have that ability to understand and give grace because he doesn't and he's using that retrospectively as an excuse to explain his actions rather than being i think completely truthful um if you really do catastrophize the worst case then you wouldn't have the audacity to plagiarize because you would be too scared of the repercussions i don't break laws mostly because it would be immoral to do most of the stuff but also because i don't want to get caught i am far too pretty for prison especially a male prison <laughs> get as many videos out as possible that was if i had said to those people who subscribed to the channel early on you know for the next video i want to make sure that it's fully correct and i want to make sure that you know it's as high quality as it can possibly be i i don't think anyone would have you know unsubscribed or not watched the next video because it didn't come out a couple of weeks after the algorithm decided that i was important for some reason i convinced myself of these things but i don't think in hindsight looking at it i don't think any of that would have happened and so there is no excuse for the misinformation and there is certainly no excuse for the plagiarism i fucked up bad i stole people's words and thoughts and opinions that they worked incredibly hard writing and publishing and finding someone to publish their thoughts and opinions and research, hard research that they had done. And, you know, in some cases I put them their names in the opening credits, which I thought was fine. But like I said, I've spoken with some of these people now and I understand why that was not okay. Because putting someone's name in the opening credits, you know, okay, here's a list of people. Here's, you know, seven or eight people who are, even if it was, you know, everyone, even if it wasn't, you know, taking giant chunks of their work, paragraphs at a time, even if it was just a sentence here or there, putting their name in the opening credits doesn't tell anyone where their work is in the video. Nobody. Can I think he's actually just understood the, the flaw in his own apology in real time. Can you get that too? He's almost kind of like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm saying how bad it was that I just stole people's work by, and only credited some of them. But like, actually, if I had even had close to the intention of doing the right thing by citing a single line, then you wouldn't know that like that one line in the whole essay was them from like quoting them at the beginning. And that's not good either, is it? So like, I I effed up royally on like two, I'm like, yes, James, that's the, well done. You're nearly there, honey. Like you're getting there. This is, I'm not gonna lie. This is progress from apology one think we're still gonna see apology three i think we may even get a fourth one okay this is, this is nowhere near done yet honestly do you know what i through the process of this i didn't know what i would even want to have seen do you know what i want to see he knew exactly what he was doing he physically would have had to for that sustained amount of time and he's still trying to give us an excuse and an understanding and a, and a, and a reasoning behind his actions i think he needs to own up I think he needs to really say, okay, you called me. I'm sorry. I did it. I'm not a nice person. I was greedy. I stole. I knew the repercussions of that. I didn't care at the time. I was making money and that's what I wanted. I am going to do better now because I've learned the hard way how bad it is when you get caught doing something bad. So if anyone wants to follow me on my journey from here forward, come along for the ride. I think that that is the most genuine thing he could do. But feeding us this this chewed up garbage of like why it was kind of valid at the time or like why the circumstances meant I had to steal and only realizing on the 38th minute why actually that doesn't even make sense because if you were citing properly from the beginning you wouldn't even assume to put something in a name at the beginning of a two hour long video essay because how would you know what the line is that you were quoting them for that's why we cite things James or wow that's a really you know smart observation I want to read more from this person and then you know to find something you found interesting you have to go play detective and so yes just putting their name in the opening credits was wrong i thought it was cool and you know cinematic but it was wrong citations should have been done properly there should never have been 
just chunks of text being put into videos. One there after times, the other. Like with uh, the Queer History of Hollywood videos that I released this past spring, they were based directly on The Celluloid Closet by Vito Russo, the book, not the documentary. I expanded on it quite a bit, but it was based directly on Vito's work and I credited him in the opening credits. And I thought it was okay to just do that because the book was out of print and Vito had passed away unfortunately, from HIV complications due to HIV and AIDS. And I looked at it more as extending his legacy, making sure that people knew about the work that he did. But I don't think I ever mentioned his name in those videos. He was, like I said, his name's in the opening credits. But I don't think I ever verbally mentioned his name. <laughs> okay, this is fast becoming one of the worst apologies. If he pulls out a ukulele, it's done. 2024 bingo card. I feel like it, this the most genuine moment we're seeing of him is he maybe is like semi on script or script, but he's like actually maybe seeing like, as I'm telling the camera now, I, I didn't cite properly. He's also then like, yeah, I didn't mention that guy once in the whole USA that was based on his work. That's a choice, James. That's a literary choice. That is a decision you made. You don't get to just say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do that now. And then it'd be okay. There's a choice you made. So much respect for. He's kind of an idol of mine. And I never mentioned his name. It wasn't because I didn't respect him or anything like that. And it also wasn't because I wanted people to think that this was all me. Again, if, if that was the case, I wouldn't have put his name in the, in the credits. I never wanted people to think that this was all me. So that's actually one of the videos I want to make. I want to make a documentary style video talking about Vito Russo and his life and everything that he accomplished because he didn't just write The Celluloid Closet. He did a lot more than that. He's someone that people should know about. Obviously, people can research him. Uh, there's books about him. But I know, you know, it's easier to sit down and watch a 20 or 30 minute YouTube video than it is to read a book. I would like to make a video about Vito Russo, properly cited and not just, you know, copy paste it from a book. I want to do the work. I want to prove, not just to you, but to myself, that I can do the work. And that's why I've started making these documentaries, working on these. I can't... I can't really put into words how sorry I am. You should try harder. I've tried. Not enough. I've tried writing like a blog entry to say that I was sorry for about two months now. And I just can't, I can't get across how sorry I am. And I know actions speak way louder than words. And I hope with my actions that I can show you that I am sorry. Are you sorry, you sorry to everyone caught, I played drive. Or are you sorry for what you did? I'm sorry to everyone I've hurt. I'm sorry to people who feel lied to. I'm sorry to people who feel like I abused the queer community. It was never my intention. Again, I'm sorry to Jesse. There were actually several other YouTubers who uh, were very nice to me. But I feel like with everything that went down, Jesse, Jesse is the one that I should apologize to the most. I'm sorry for the people who felt scammed. Maybe in the 43 minutes, take the time to name some of these other creators. Surely that's not going to be that hard. Just a suggestion. Elos was a grift. It was not. It is not. I am very sorry. Was again. No. And I hope given time... And my actions proving it, that you can believe me. Okay, let me be, let me be real with you, okay? I really did want to have, uh, I really did want to like, ah, oh, I really wanted to believe him. I don't. I think he thinks people are stupid or less intelligent than him if he thinks that we are all going to just assume that it was just this like big mistake or something. We don't. 
I think that I won't personally be watching his content in a time and an age where content clicks and attention and loyalty and trust are so fragile right now that like why would we give him that time maybe there are some of his uber fans out there that will great six people have signed up to his new patron i would worry that the only people left on his side uh, that would be part of a new fandom would be people that didn't see exactly what he did as wrong and i would maybe argue that they're not the nicest people to have in your audience not that that necessarily matters but i wonder if that is kind of a segue to a uh why i left the left move i don't know that's a hypothesis at this point i don't really feel there's been much growth there's been time but we have a new patron we have excuses we have context maybe and we have a sorry at least he used the word plagiarism for god's sake will i be watching his new stuff absolutely not will i be covering to see if there's a third apology you bet your bottom dollar love you all thank you for watching i hope you i hope that along the way you could kind of see what i had to say empathize and that we're in it together i love you thank you for sticking with me through my coverage of this i have definitely learned a lot about myself my creativity um one of the best takeaways i've had is that like creativity is a skill and that we're blessed to have that skill we shouldn't take it for granted um which is partially why i've gone into more of a video essay element because i can write them and i can create them and i am excited to do that so i hope you stick around if you're just finding my channel please do subscribe because um you're gonna see me put my money where my mouth is i'm gonna script everything myself which is the start take care of yourselves stay as positive as you can i love you all until next time bye this is not the thing you think it is i don't know why i'm singing but it's passion wait 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 oh my god has ah! just responded are you serious This will pro <laughs> complete side note okay this is literally tea i just had an email from someone i very ambitiously reached out to for my next video essay and she just responded and she watches my content you have no idea what that means to me <laughs> oh my god <laughs> everyone if okay so honestly this isn't a plug this is an actual email i just had and I didn't realize I had it this morning, which I just missed. I've had such a crazy day. Um, there's more to it than that. Oh my gosh. I'm starstruck. Ambitious as hell. Let's <sighs> get on with this thing. <laughs> I don't care about James anymore. I care about my own work that I crafted myself. Anyway, I have to go and sort out this email. I am so psyched. Oh my goodness me. Okay.